How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week was, wait, let me get more to this. This week was such an amazing week. I, I definitely did one of my best cover-ups and I'm so proud of it. I was able to play around a lot with my tones and, and a lot of my highlights and my colors. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna let you guys watch the video. So enjoy. I'm doing a cover-up and the concept is gonna be an Egyptian theme with uh, an Egyptian, Egyptian, Egyptian theme, <laughs> Egyptian theme with um, with hints of color, uh, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. So I'm excited. So this is what my client has right now. He has a map, like a grid of a map with a feather. This is a compass, which we're not going to be covering that up. But uh, <clears throat> this is what we're going to be doing today. And the concept. Oh, check this out. You you weren't even ready. Boom. So whatever we learned last on last week's video, I'm not gonna explain it this week, we're just gonna apply it. So the area that I'm gonna be focusing on to explain a little bit more and go in depth is uh, this area here, which is how can you pack so much detail in such a small uh, tattoo, right? How you can pack so much detail in such a small area without uh, having to worry about how is it gonna heal and is the ink gonna stick and um, am I gonna scar the skin? So all of these little things, are gonna, I'm gonna be explaining it. And the needle that I'm gonna be using is either a seven round liner or a three round liner. The next part that I'm gonna focus on is the face, the face of Anubis. One side, I'm gonna be doing the texture here. I'm gonna focus on doing all these little textures and how I'm gonna execute it how I'm gonna apply the, the ink and how to give it that illusion that it has the sun hitting or I guess the highlight on the side of the cheek. And yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So let's get this stencil started. ¿Hace cuánto te hiciste este? Como unos tres años. Tres años. Tres. Okay. Tres y medio por ahí. This is the tattoo that he has. Uh, he got it done about three years ago, and there's nothing that's pretty much uh, scarred. Everything's pretty light. The only area that's the darkest part is this, the bottom of this uh, swirl, and the feather. I already printed out the stencil. Boom which is perfect. So we have, I want the sun to land in the middle of this. Equipo, esta. Here we go, perfect. I put a little too much, so I'm just gonna um, wait until it dries a little bit, because otherwise what's gonna happen is that the stencil's gonna smear, and you don't want that, especially with this kind of stencil that it has a lot of uh, meticulous detail. Sí, ve nomás. <laughs> casi, casi. <laughs> Parece, ¿verdad? Como que tengo un poquito de experiencia. Nada más poquito. Oh. No, pues qué a gusto. Yeah, now that you have the stencil, let's, uh, let's, get, it, let's, let's get it started. Listo. So uh, now that I'm gonna start doing King Tut, I'm gonna uh, go in depth with how I'm gonna apply the my grays and how I'm gonna dilute it. Basically, my goal is to how to pack in 
small little details and not be worried about that it's gonna fade or the ink is not gonna stick or you're gonna scar the skin because it's such a small tight area that it is um, it is very uh, common for someone to easily scar the skin so that's what we're gonna go over today and the sponsor for this video is higher level they came out with their own brand of needles. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, this is gonna be the first time I'm gonna be using them. I'm gonna be using the seven round liner with a three round liner. Most likely I'm not gonna be using any Max today because it is uh, a lot of small details. So first thing is first, I'm gonna apply my darkest black and I'm gonna start by the lips. So here we go. Like every video I'm running my machine at 5.0 with my three, with my seven round liner here. I'm gonna dab it in my in my napkin one time in case there's like like a drop of ink just hanging on to the needle that way it doesn't like smear or it creates a puddle. So here we go. See that now it's clean. Boom. Nice. There you go. Now I'm gonna start doing the eyes, same thing. I noticed that there's like a pupil inside, so I'm just gonna add it. It is not that visible, but it is enough to give it some dimension to the eye. And then later on, I'm just gonna go back with my darkest gray and try to blend it in with everything else. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you feel like there's something that you should add or take out while you're tattooing, and you're confident that it's gonna look better, do it. Only if you're confident though. If you're doubting yourself, don't do it. All right, perfect. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm just gonna outline the rest of the statue so I won't lose any of my stencil because I definitely want to be able to navigate through it randomly. Like I wanna go to the head and then go back down to the neck and then go to my sides without worrying about the stencil so I'm gonna go ahead and line the whole thing and come back and then show you guys how I blend down my grays. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my darkest, um, this is solid black and luckily the line that's across the face lands exactly where that shade is at so it fit perfect, it was not on purpose, it was an accident. Nice. And like I mentioned before, I am not feathering, I am packing. That way I make sure that the ink stays where it's supposed to. And I see on the, my reference that there is black here and then it continues being solid black. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna uh, just do my own thing and I'm gonna leave a tiny, tiny, tiny gap between the neck and the beard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Because I want that to stand out. And it does not affect the way the tattoo is gonna look. It's just a little bit of a, I guess, uh, giving it my own style and making a decision on what's gonna make this look better. See that? Oh, tiny little gap makes a big difference for what I want to do. The reason why I'm packing in my tones with a liner, and I do this on almost in every single tattoo, if you notice, round liners or round shaders. The reason why I use them a lot is because it is easier to for the ink to penetrate and it's creating a hole in your skin and the ink is filling that hole and closing because it's so sharp so pointy, it creates a hole faster for the ink to fill in that hole. And with the mag, it's just kind of bouncing, like scratching your skin, and it takes more passes for it to create those holes for the ink to fill them in. So that is the reason why I'm using a, a liner. Maestro de la Universidad de Tatuajes. Como que sé, como que sé. Le hago al pedo, a ver si me entienden. <laughs> Usando palabras grandes 
Eh, esa no para. Efficient. Meticulous. Plan Guerrero, municipio de Chilpancingo. De allá soy. ¿Eres de Guerrero? Sí, de Guerrero. Chilpancingo, al ladito de Acapulco. Los de allá no tienen barba, por eso no traigo yo. ¿Y aprendiste cómo mover, mover la pancita? Eh, no, no, eso nunca aprendí. <risa> nunca aprendí a mover la pancita. No. Ok, so now uh, I'm gonna grab my medium, my mid tone, and I'm just gonna start going over it. Right on top of that black, I'm just gonna go at it. Packing, same thing. And um, I understand that for some people might be a little scary to start packing in because, you know, as long as you, when you're packing in, there is no, oh damn, I, I can go darker or I can go lighter. There's no way, like you gotta be 100% sure that whatever you're packing is exactly what you're gonna like to see on this tattoo. Because whatever you put in this, uh, on this area is exactly how it's gonna look healed. So pick your tones wisely. Um, I try to explain a lot of my videos how to mix my inks, you know. Uh, but hopefully soon I'll have a seminar coming in. So you never know. I'll probably create a seminar where I can just invite artists and you guys can uh, come to Arizona and I'll give you guys a legit seminar. Uh, but yeah, I'm planning on doing that soon. So if you're interested, drop a comment. Should I do a seminar soon this year or next year? You see how that's already helping me to create the highlight? That's exactly what I wanted. Something negative about using liners and packing in, it is way easier to scar the skin if you don't know how to use it. So if you pass, if you pack it in this area and you don't like the way it looks the first pass, you can go back at it because there's a possibility that you might scar the skin. But you won't know that you scar the skin until it's healing. There it is. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, making sure that I'm paying attention to my contrast and my highlights, because those are gonna play a big role in this cover-up. Since it's a small tattoo, you can't just go solid black into that face and expect that thing to glow. You have to pay attention to the contrast and leave the open skin where you're supposed to leave open skin. I'm gonna move on to my lightest gray to finish it off and, and fill in those, those areas that need that extra contrast and highlights. So I'm gonna start applying my lightest gray. So right where I finish with my lightest gray, I'm gonna start, I mean my mid gray, I'm gonna start applying it. It definitely gives it a whole different dimension when you start adding those uh, lightest, your lightest grays, it makes the whole thing come together. And uh, I like to mention this in every video in case you guys are new to this channel. I, when it comes down to cover-ups, do not use white to cover black. The black is always going to overpower white, no matter what. Use white just to do little highlights here and there, just to give it that extra pop, but do not use it as a tone. Use it just to give it those, those little details at the end of the, of, of the tattoo just to see how much more you can make it pop. And uh, if you have a question, make sure to check out the rest of my videos. There's tons of information. So if you didn't hear, if you have a question and I did not answer it on this video, most likely I answer it in a different video. So make sure to check those out and I hope I answer your questions. If not, drop a comment. I'll try to answer it in the next video. And there you go. Now let's continue with the rest of the tattoo.
I got carried away, so I didn't record. <laughs> I was doing the whole face. I was too hyped, so I just decided to just go all out. And But I did leave this part of the, the face so I can show you guys how to execute the texture here. So we're gonna start with my solid black. I'm gonna start with the eye. So I'm gonna outline the eye first and work my way out. So here we go. Boom. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be applying some white highlights and make the eyes super white and make it look like they're glowing. So, go. dab it a little bit real quick, make sure that there's no puddle. And then you go in and just have fun with it. There is uh, so much texture in this tattoo that it can give you the freedom to even come up with your own texture on random areas and still make it look good. Around the bottom of the eye, there's a lot of wrinkles. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, just make it my own. Because I know what, as long as you keep that contrast and those highlights on the right spots, best believe that you can make anything look good. <clears throat> so I'm just going to start doing this. Boom. Perfect. I guess uh, this part of the tattoo, it's, I'm not, I want to, I want to show you guys that sometimes it's better to go with your own instincts. And, you know, it's a lot more fun when you don't have to follow every single detail in the reference. Obviously, if it's a portrait, then it's a different story because you have to copy paste everything. but I'm still keeping the highlights because that's what I really need and if you're new to this channel this technique is called la pendejete technique <laughs> tight I'm not cleaning the needle, I'm just moving from my solar black ink cap to my mid-tone ink cap. And by the time I reach the point where it's the lightest, it should be the perfect tone. So it's all about timing it. Knowing how to, knowing how to navigate and knowing when to start dipping in your needle into the tone that you wanted to transition to. Now I'm gonna start dipping it in into my lightest, my lightest gray, and it should give me something a little bit lighter, but not too light. Then I dipped it once more, once again, or once more? Once again? Either or. Either or. <laughs> once more. <laughs> there you go, now it's getting lighter, as you can see. One more dip and it should be perfect. There we go. Now I'm gonna go vice versa. So now I'm gonna dip it in my mid tone because I need those dark tones on this area. And I'm gonna finish off with my solid black. And I'm gonna go to my solid black. And this is my solid black here. Boom. Perfect. And now it's all about just playing with the tones by now because I already have what I need, which is the map of the face. So I'm just gonna just start making decisions where I want my light tones and where I want it to be darker. So it's just going back and forth now. that gaps that I have left in between the texture I'm gonna add just little dots of white highlights 
not too harsh but just enough to make it look like it's it's wet moist moist, moist. Mm -hmm. glossy glare of sweat <laughs> and there we go let me just finish up this and and that's because there's nothing else I can say about this area I mean I I'm trying to come up with more things to say because I'm over here being all spontaneous if one of you does a uh, texture differently feel free to drop a comment and let us know how you execute it you use a Mac do you use a round shader a round liner what's your voltage thank you guys for watching this video I really appreciate it if you watch this video and you still have a question uh, feel free to drop a comment, you know, there's not a stupid question. Go ahead and drop a comment and I hope that if you Know the answer go ahead and reply to that comment and let them know the, uh, The correct way to do it or maybe give a tip or an advice You know because sometimes there's a lot of comments and it's really hard for me to keep up But I try to answer your guys's questions on a, on a weekly basis But as long as you guys keep the comments respectful and don't be toxic do not be toxic. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Don't be toxic <laughs> but other than that if you're a tattoo artist i hope you learned something from this video and if you're a tattoo enthusiast i hope you were entertained i'll see you guys next week and don't forget to subscribe peace